Genesis. I mean, we've looked at creation. Uh, we've looked at God. That's pretty basic. <laughs> Sin, salvation, uh, repentance, faith, atonement. Uh, the last time I preached, we looked at assurance. Uh, you know, what a blessing it is to have that assurance uh, based on God's word by faith that we can have a relationship with the Lord, that we do have a relationship, uh, that He's our Heavenly Father if, if you've trusted Him. Uh, this morning we're looking at prayer. Uh, in its simplest understanding, prayer is just talking to God. And uh, we can do that anytime, in any place. Uh, prayer. Let me read Matthew 6, starting in verse 5. And I'm going to read down through verse 13. Matthew 6, verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetition, as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of, before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, that's usually called the Lord's Prayer. It's really the model prayer. And he says, after this manner, pray you. Uh, you know, prayer is, is a, it's a funny thing, because it's often misused, uh, many times misunderstood. I don't think we'll ever understand everything about prayer, but we can understand enough. We can understand that we can speak to the Lord. It's very personal. It's very practical. He gives us some things we shouldn't do as he talks there. This is uh, Jesus' teaching. Um, he says we're not to pray like the hypocrites. You notice that in verse 5? Uh, a hypocrite is, is someone who says one thing and means another. Now, how stupid is that to do that to God? <laughs> God knows exactly what we mean. God knows exactly what's in our heart. It's no use saying one thing to God when you mean something else. Uh, if you're here Wednesday night, I, I had a, a brief uh, message that was presented about being honest with God. You might as well be honest with God. It's no use being a hypocrite with God. Watch your heart. Mean what you say. You know, prayer is not just words. It's not just uh, something we memorize and say. I often think of this when it comes to the hymns. You know, we are, we're singing things, and uh, the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 12 that we're going to give an account for every idle word that we say. <laughs> and we need to be careful that we're not hypocrites, especially in prayer. In, in verse 6, he's basically saying we're not praying to make a show. Uh, there, were, there were people in those days, and still, I guess, you, you see it sometimes in the the news reports about Israel and different ones who they'll stand on a corner and they're, they're all dressed, you know, funny and they'll, they'll bob their heads and they'll, you know, they'll pray and, and so on. And it's like a, a show. And it's, it's like, a, a, I don't know, just a, a ceremony. And they're doing it for people to see them. The importance is not their communion with the Lord. It's, it's a show. And listen, prayer is not to be that. Now, God does teach us that we are to pray together. Uh, this is not saying that the only time you can pray uh, is by yourself. Most of your praying will be by yourself, by the way, but uh, there's times when we, we pray together, but we need to be careful that it's not uh, a pretense. Later on in Matthew 23, he, he rebukes the Pharisees that they, for a pretense, make long prayers. And that's, that's not the way it's to be. We're not just to talk. Uh, we're to talk to the Lord. And then, of course, you saw there in verse 7, he says, don't use vain repetitions. Uh, vain just means empty useless things. Sometimes, now watch yourself because sometimes you'll kind of get into prayer mode, you know, and you'll just say things that you just say when you pray, and you're not even thinking what you're saying. That's not right. Now, we're not to pray like the heathen. There's heathens who, I say heathen, I'll just use that general term, who they have a system where they put a prayer on a, 
on a piece of paper and they put it in a little thing and they twirl that thing around and every time they twirl it, that's a prayer. Now, you, you, you think that's vain repetition? I do. <laughs> and we need to be careful. We're not just saying words. We're not just, you know, Lord this and Lord that. Uh, we need to be communicating with, with our God. That's a blessing and a privilege that God has given to us that we can speak to Him. In verse 8, he kind of summarizes it. Be not ye therefore like unto them. And the ones he's mentioned are hypocrites and heathen. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask Him. See, the point of prayer is not to inform God. You know, when you, when you pray, God doesn't say, Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> God knows what you need before you ask Him, but He wants you to talk to Him. God made us to communicate with the Lord, to communicate with Him. And uh, yeah, that's what I was saying about prayer. Uh, there's things I don't understand about prayer, but I know this. God says He loves me, and He wants to talk to me. Now, the way He talks to me is through the Bible. The way I talk to Him is through prayer. And we need to communicate with God. Now, He, he gives us some elements of prayer. Uh, in verse 9, I mentioned already, He says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. This, this is not a prayer to be memorized and to be repeated over and over to God. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but um, it's a model. He says, this is a, this is a pattern after this manner. And we can look at this you know, very brief prayer and see uh, that prayer has some, some very basic things. One is, is Godward. As you see there in, in verse 9, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in, in earth as it is in heaven. You know, our, our prayer is Godward. And we're talking to the Lord. We're, we're worshiping Him. Uh, many times we need to remove hindrances between us and God. Uh, you know, if there's sin in our life, that, that needs to be, to be dealt with. Uh, there's just uh, uh, the, the main area of prayer is, is Godward. It's for the glory of God. As well, prayer has to do with the needs of men, of, of people. We pray about our own needs. We pray about the needs of others. Uh, when he says there in, in uh, verse... Uh, Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Well, that's, that's a basic need, isn't it? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, these are, are basic things, spiritual, physical, social areas that we're praying about for ourselves. It's not wrong to pray for yourself. Uh, but we also pray for others. The different names we give those, you know, petition and intercession and supplication and so on. Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 6, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me, he says. You know, pray for me. Pray for each other. Pray for yourself. Uh, there's a lot of areas of prayer. Uh, praise. You know, praise the Lord is, is not just a phrase. It means you're saying something to God that praises Him. Uh, thanksgiving. Adoration, confession, and so on. Uh, we need to learn what the Bible says about prayer. But most of all, uh, to me, the most important area of prayer is who we're praying to. <laughs> uh, we're talking to God. At the end of verse 13, he says, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And depending upon where you're from, it's either amen or amen. In my Bible, it's amen. But that doesn't make any difference, does it? Uh, the power of prayer. We're looking to God. And, and that's the most important part of, of prayer. There'll be times when, uh, like me, you've probably had some time when you've fallen asleep while you're praying. Well, I've done the same thing to my wife. <laughs> you know, you're talking away and all of a sudden you're not. <laughs> I don't think God minds that. But... Uh, we're, we're praying to God. We're talking to Him. And we're asking. Uh, one of the main areas of prayer is just asking. Over the, just across the page in my Bible, Matthew 7, verse 7, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Then he gives an illustration. He says, or what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, 
being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Yeah, the, the word pray means ask. Uh, we pray to God. We're looking to God and we're trusting uh, God. We ask in faith. Uh, in, in James chapter 1 and, and verses 6 and 7, He says, he's talking there about a person asking God for wisdom. He says, let him, ask in, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. We need to ask in faith. We need to ask. We need to ask trusting God. Now understand what faith is. The Bible describes faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You know, people believe a lot of things. That doesn't mean it's right. And uh, you can say, oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. Well, what does God say? And uh, when, we, when we're talking about faith, we're talking about believing God. We're not just talking about believing. We're talking about believing God. And as we, as we go to God, we need to believe Him. That's the most important thing. We're going to God in prayer. In the Gospel of Mark... Verse 22, I'm sorry, uh, chapter 11, verse 22. Jesus said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye shall receive them, ye shall have them. Now, this is an area of prayer, I'll be honest with you, I don't completely understand, but I believe it. <laughs> I, need to, I need to pray in faith, and I need to believe God. I need to be looking to God for what He wants to do in my life. An another area that the Bible talks about with prayer is we ask in Jesus' name. Now, for many of us, often that's just a little phrase we tack on at the end. In Jesus' name, Amen. And sometimes I think kids don't even understand you know, what that is. You, know, you teach your children to pray, and in Jesus' name, amen. Um, but when you do something in someone else's name, it means it's by their authority. It's because, try this sometime when you're praying. At the end, say to God, Lord, I'm praying this because I believe this is what Jesus would pray. It'll make you be a little more serious about what you're saying, won't it? That's what we mean when we say, in Jesus' name. We're able to pray because Jesus said we can pray. We're able to pray because Jesus opened the door to the throne room and said we have access to God. That's an amazing thing. You know, the more you think about that, the more amazed you'll get that we have access to God. We ask in Jesus' name. Now, uh, the verse where he said that is John 14 and verses 13 and 14, uh, amongst others. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. The next verse says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, we're going to talk about that tonight. But uh, we need to ask in Jesus' name. The power of prayer is not our prayers. It's who we pray to. We're praying to God. Uh, in, uh, in Romans chapter 8, this is a, an amazing statement. I hate to use that word too often, but Romans 8, verse 31, he says, If God be for us, who can be against us? And, and then he gives the, the reasoning. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Listen, if God would give you his son, what good things are he going to withhold? You know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, God has given us uh, the opportunity and the authority to pray. We pray in, in Jesus' name. In uh, Philippians 4.19, let's see, uh, I should know that verse. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah, when we pray, we're, we're praying in, in Jesus' name. Uh, we're calling upon the power of God. And I want to encourage you, uh, to be a prayer, a person of prayer. There are some hindrances to prayer. Take a look, if, if you have your Bible, there in James chapter uh, 4. 
Hebrews, James. There are some things that will hinder your prayer life. You, you might relate it to communication with in, a person, uh, husband and wife. Uh, if you're a husband or a wife, you know there are things that can hinder the communication in your home. Uh, there's times when you know, it's like you can cut the atmosphere with a knife, you know. Oh, who's going to be the first to say, I'm sorry, or I was wrong, or, you know, whatever the situation is. And uh, it, it's the same in our prayer life with the Lord, except that it'll never be a problem from His part. <laughs> it's always going to be us that need to make the change. Um, one of the problems He states here in James 4, verses 1 and 2, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Really, there's a couple of problems there. One is just our sinful nature. But he says one of the reasons, one of the things that hinders our prayer is we don't ask. Have you ever had somebody say that to you? Why didn't you tell me that? You didn't ask. <laughs> we say that to each other sometimes, don't we? Uh, well, God wants us to ask. Sometimes I, I, I kind of picture, you know, God's got this blessing all waiting for us, and we don't ask. And He's still got that blessing, and we don't ask. <laughs> and when we ask, He says, oh, finally. <laughs> and he, he blesses us with what we should have been asking for all along. Now, again, I, I don't understand all of that. But Jesus said in Luke 18, 1, Man ought always to pray and not to faint. I think many times we just kind of, oh, you know, we, we give up when the Lord says, pray, ask me. We have not because we ask not sometimes. Verse 3 of James 4, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. He gives an explanation there. Asking amiss is to consume it upon our lusts. Selfish, um, uh, ungodly things sometimes even. Yeah, I've, I've had people tell me about how they prayed about something that was it would actually have been a crime if you know, God had, had answered that prayer in the affirmative. Um, we ask amiss. Sometimes we ask uh, for our will. You know, instead of praying, thy will be done on earth, we're praying, Lord, let my will be done. Uh, we ask amiss. Uh, instead of praying for God's glory, we're praying for our glory. We ask amiss to consume it uh, upon our lusts. And then, like we saw earlier, Sometimes we pray, but we're not really praying in faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. And I think sometimes we're praying and we think, oh, God will never do that. Yeah, we're not basing it on God's Word. We're not basing it on the, the power of God and, and the, uh, the love of God. We don't ask in faith. But I think, uh, like in, he, in James 4, verse 1, oftentimes I think we're hindered by sin. We're praying and, or we're not praying uh, because we've not really dealt with, with sin in our life. There, there's a verse. This is one of those verses you, you need to either know or know where it is. It's Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, that's not hard to understand. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to figure that verse out. You might have to look up iniquity if you didn't know that. Iniquity is sin. If I regard iniquity in my heart, now to regard, uh, that, that means more than just a passing glance. Where, you know, it's something that's a problem. It's something that's important to us. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You know, sometimes, well, oftentimes, we, we need to confess things that are wrong in our life and forsake them. Confess means to agree with God. And in prayer, we just need to agree with God. Listen, if you're saved, your sins are forgiven. But it doesn't mean you can't sin. And when we do, we need to agree with God. Oh, Lord, that was wrong. And, and, and God will help us then. It'll open up that, that pathway of prayer. Uh, we'll be able to, to speak clearly to Him. Now, I don't mean to be uh, irreverent or anything, but it's kind of like God saying, talk to the hand. <laughs> you, know, you, you need to deal with that. You deal with that sin first, then we'll talk about this other issue. Hang on. What about that sin? You know? We need to confess our sin. And we're, our, our prayer life is hindered 
uh, because we don't. Uh, we, we read some, some of the verses in Mark chapter 11 where he's talking about prayer. and In verse 25 of Mark 11, he says, When you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, again, there's things I don't completely understand, but that's pretty plain. He's saying if you're wanting to pray, a hindrance in your life will be as if you're not willing to forgive someone else. In Matthew 6, he says exactly the same thing. Um, we need to deal with our sin. The reason we won't forgive is because of our own sin. It's not because of the sin of the one who's, who's wronged us. And there's, there's a lot of areas in our life like that. When as you're praying, God will bring something to your mind. Deal with it then. As someone has said, keep short books with God. I guess that's an accounting term probably. Uh, you know, don't, don't put it off. Don't say, I'll pay that one later. Pay it now. Take care of it now. Uh, deal with, with that. There's, there's plenty of hindrances to sin, but listen, there's plenty of help with sin as well. I think one of the hindrances is, is sometimes we don't accept God's answers. We had an illustration of this uh, Friday night. Someone who will remain unnamed was asking someone else to do something. And the person said no. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, please, 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 do it, do it, do it, do it. I finally had to say to him, stop asking. No, they weren't asking me. But... And you know, sometimes we do that to God. No is an answer. You know, that's, a hard, that's a hard thing to learn, isn't it? Parents sometimes make the problem of, or they make it a problem by saying, we'll see. <laughs> or maybe, well, you know, sometimes God says wait. And it's hard to tell the difference sometimes between no and wait, isn't it? But sometimes God just says no. And we don't want that answer, so we, you know, we put it, go into beg mode. Uh, Yes is an answer. Sometimes God says yes even before you ask, you know, like the Bible says. Sometimes God says wait. Sometimes God answers different than what we asked. Now, let me tell you this. It's always going to be better. <laughs> uh, oftentimes you'll ask and you, you're asking God for this particular thing and God says, no, I'm going to give you this thing. <laughs> and it's, it's a lot bigger and a lot better. Uh, we heard of a person who they really had a desire to go to France as a missionary. They just felt like that was God's will for their life. They were praying about it. And God sent them to Quebec, Canada, where they speak French. <laughs> Different than they asked. Was God wrong or were they wrong? Listen, God is never wrong. And when God answers our prayers different than we ask, we need to receive it as from the hand of a, of a loving Heavenly Father. I mean, we do that to our children. God, can I have a machine gun? You know, Dad, I should have, I meant to say, Dad, can I have a machine gun? No, son, you can't have a machine gun. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm being a bit, bit silly there. But we need to b understand, uh, sometimes we're going to ask for things and God's going to say, no, that's, that's not what you need. Sometimes God's going to say, you need something different than what you even, you know, above all that we ask or think. And we need to understand that our access to God, the Bible says, is through Jesus Christ. I mentioned that earlier. We pray in Jesus' name. You might be there in James. In Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 19, it talks about our access to God uh, through Jesus. Hebrews 10, verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. It talks about uh, we have boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way to God. He's the only way to God. And we enter in Jesus' name. We go by the by the blood of Jesus. And you know, when you stand before God, if you're saved, it's going to be because of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus. Not by works of righteousness, which we've done. Our access to God is through Christ, and it's with the Holy Spirit's help. 
You know, I think sometimes we, we forget that. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, amongst other places, it says, The Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That's not talking about your groanings. That's not about the Holy Spirit uh, making our petitions, our prayers known, helping us uh, in our prayer life. Jude wrote, praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, we read in Ephesians uh, where he said, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. God's Holy Spirit will help us uh, in prayer. Uh, God speaks to us by the Bible. We speak to God in prayer. Listen, don't minimize the power of prayer. Don't make it just a little, a, a little thing. Sometimes I go by churches and they have these billboards, you know, and they'll have sometimes some of the silliest things on there. And I think, man, we don't see, serve a silly God. We serve a great God. And we need to be careful how we, we refer to him and how we, uh, how we treat him. Uh, we speak to God in prayer. God will answer prayer. As God speaks to you through his word, you know, that's a great time to pray. I often say to God, Lord, I don't understand that. <laughs> and you know, he doesn't always tell me right then but the Lord will help you as God speaks to you you speak to him you ever spoken to somebody and they wouldn't reply I, yeah, I have it happen every once in a while it's a real weird feeling uh, usually it's children but not, not always And can you imagine as, as you're reading God's word and you won't talk back to him you know we need to we need to be speaking to the Lord let me give you some uh, some practical areas of, of prayer. Number one, let your gaze be on God and your glance on your request. You understand what I'm saying there? Don't keep your vision on your problem or what you want. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Now, I've met people several in my life where they were fixated on something. Sometimes it's young people and it's marriage. Oh, I'm just praying that God will give me a wife or give me a husband. And that's all they think about. Listen, get your eyes off of that and get your eyes on the Lord. I, I, I've had people say, oh, well, I just need, and you know, they'll list off something. Well, listen, what you just need is the Lord. That's right. <laughs> Keep your eyes on the Lord. Let your gaze be on God, your glance on your request. Secondly, let prayer be your first choice, not your last. Uh, I've done it, you've done it, where you, you rush around doing things, and then you say, oh, uh, Lord, please bless this. <laughs> Instead of first saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? You'll save a lot of time if you'll go to the Lord first. Uh, let, your, let prayer be your first choice, not your last. Thirdly, pray more from conviction than from crisis. Now, let me explain what I mean there. A lot of times we wait until we're in trouble, and then, boy, we're, we're prayer warriors then. You know, what do they, they say? that There's no atheists in the foxhole? <laughs> you know, the, the bullets are flying, oh, Lord, help me. Uh, you know, don't just pray when you're in crisis. Pray from conviction. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying don't pray when there's a crisis. Uh, hopefully, just naturally, you'll pray. Uh, when I was about 15, 14, I was riding somewhere with my mother. We had a little old Volkswagen bug invented by Hitler's people. Anyway, uh, and she was, she was driving along, and the, it began to skid. And she said, oh, God, and came out of the skit. And I said, Mom, you, sh you shouldn't swear. She said, son, I wasn't swearing. I was praying. <laughs> Listen, and there's just time you, you'll just cry out to God. Oh, Lord, help me. And that's okay. But don't just wait for that. Uh, pray from conviction. I, I came across uh, one of my old prayer lists when my kids were little. And I was praying about their salvation. One of them I was praying for their potty training. God, God's answered that prayer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, praying about their, their mate in life. And, you know, you don't just wait till they're in trouble and say, oh, God, help my kids. Pray from conviction. You know, pray about what, you, what you, you know God wants for their life. And one of the things that will, will happen is as you're praying, you'll think, oh, I should do this. God will lay something on your heart to, to help them. So pray more from conviction than, than from crisis. Fourthly, let your prayer be filled with praise. 
You know, the Bible said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, there's a lot of things we need and a lot of things we'll ask for, but listen, there's more that you can praise him for. God gives us most of what we need without even asking. Uh, we need to praise him. You know, some people are, uh, I don't know if you've ever read or, or seen uh, Winnie the Pooh. There, there's a character in there called Eeyore. Some people are just Eeyores, aren't they? Oh, well, life is tough. <laughs> and there's not much praise. Uh, we need to be praising the Lord. God can, God can help you with that. And then pray in the Spirit. Now, if you don't understand what that means, you know, ask the Lord to, to help you understand that. Prayer pleases God. For whatever reason, God wants to hear us speak to Him. God wants to communicate with us. And you know, if, if you're saved... Uh, there's, there's some prayers that uh, should be precious to you. And uh, I mentioned I was, I was at these meetings and, and the prayer was, was re, or the subject was rejoicing. And one of the verses they mentioned was Psalm 85, verse 6, where he says, Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? That's a great prayer. The Psalms are full of, of great prayers. Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? That would be a great prayer for us to pray. For you, for me. We need God to revive us, to make us more what we, we should be for him. That I may rejoice in thee. That, you know, if you're, if you're looking for something to pray and, and uh, rejoicing, you, you know, just find something in Scripture. Find a, an area that, that God would have you to, uh, where you need to be more like Jesus. But you know, for every person at some point in their life, the, the prayer that God needs to hear from you is, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. Now, that's the first prayer that God needs to, to hear as we realize before God that, that we've sinned and deserve to go to hell. You know, some will realize that when they're children, some when they're adults. But every person needs to come to the point where they understand where God says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. None of us can earn or deserve God's, God's mercy or grace. Uh, that's just in the definition of mercy and grace, really. Uh, we need to admit that we're sinners and deserve hell. We need to believe that Christ died for our sins and rose again. Uh, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And, and it's by prayer. We, we believe, it's faith, but then by prayer, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, there needs to be a time when we receive that, that gift of salvation. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. We deserve separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And what a blessing it is that we can... Uh, well, the First John, he says, These are written that you may know that you have eternal life. It's by faith. We can know, not by works. It's not by a ceremony. You know, I can't give you a document that says, saved. <laughs> it's got to be written in the Lamb's book of life. That's a transaction between you and God. And in your heart you believe, and then by faith you pray and say, God, I believe. I believe you when you say I'm a sinner and deserve hell. I believe you when you say that Jesus... Listen, we weren't there when Jesus came. I was just thinking this week, what an amazing thing it must have been to see Jesus heal a blind man. That blind man were you. Man, you'd never forget that. It's no wonder thousands got saved as, as the disciples went and, and preached the gospel. They'd seen it or they knew somebody who'd seen it. Listen, Jesus said to Thomas, Blessed are you, though you've not seen, yet you believe. We, we read it in God's Word. We believe because by faith we believe God would not lie to us. And we know that, that historically it's true, but... Spiritually, it's true. God has made a way through, by Jesus Christ for us to know Him. And by faith, we pray and say, Lord, I believe. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, that's a prayer that God needs to hear from every person. No one's born a Christian. No church can make you a Christian. That's a transaction you do with God, and it's by faith through prayer. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. What a blessing that we can, as Christians, come right into the throne room. He's our Heavenly Father. You know, if there was a secretary, they'd just say, go right on in. He's waiting to talk to you. <laughs> you know? And that's a, that's a blessing for us as believers. But first, 
You've got to enter the door. You've got to go through Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you this morning. If you're not saved, trust the Lord today. He's, he's paid the price. He's made it possible. You just receive it as a gift. If you are saved, enjoy your relationship with the Lord. Just enjoy your Heavenly Father. Snuggle up to Him. And, you know, it's, the, the pressures of life are only a problem when we let them get between us and the Lord. If we put them behind us, they'll push us to Him. They'll, they'll make it our relationship tighter. Uh, this morning we're going to sing a, a, a song in, in closing. It's page 154. I guess nobody has a book. Uh, Jesus is calling. And I uh, encourage you this morning to uh, claim this truth of prayer. One, that you can be saved and know it. And then as a Christian that you have access to God and, and His Holy Spirit will help you. And we pray uh, because Jesus has given us the, the right uh, to come into the throne room. Uh, as we'll come up.